adult content creators from the subscription service OnlyFans decided to flock to Queensland to create explicit videos with teenagers who are there for schoolies. Uh, three porn stars all in their mid-twenties were then invited on the project, introduced as a trio who have received considerable backlash from the online community for inviting 18-year-olds to fl film explicit content for their subscribers. But on the project, the girls received nothing but laughs and giggles and softball questions from the hosts who thought it was all very funny. They're of legal age, but why this particular demographic? Well, I mean, prior to schoolies, we were already kind of getting a few messages. Yeah. Uh, laughed them off a bit, but then Bonnie and I knew we wanted to make some more relatable content. They were already reaching out. We thought, what a time. They're legal. They're wanting and willing to participate. Why not? So, ladies, what's in it for the teenage boys or the teenagers who are involved in this? Oh, well, what's not in it for them, basically? <laughs> um, a lot of them are very, you know, they haven't had a lot of experience. So not only are they getting experience, it's, you know, they're getting to meet us. Joining me now is Rachel Wong, CEO of Women's Forum Australia. Rachel, the project has now removed that video. They were quite proud of it. It was tweeted out, but it's since been deleted. Uh, tell me why they've taken that action firstly. Well, I can only assume, Rita, that many Australians were as disgusted as I was and they received a huge amount of public backlash online um, and have realised that actually the interview wasn't a good idea. Now, we call it only fans and adult content, but this is essentially porn, isn't it? So the, 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 explain to the audience what OnlyFans is, because I think <laughs> our demographic probably isn't across the detail of OnlyFans. Yeah, so OnlyFans is basically a site where people can upload videos online, sexual content for people to watch and earn money from it. And the project's interview was basically a free promo for pornography and prostitution and the predatory sexual exploitation of young people and grooming teenagers into the sex industry. Um, you know, they allowed the woman to talk about the huge amounts of money they were apparently making, apparently as much as $30,000 in 24 hours, without actually mentioning the fact that most OnlyFans creators don't even make a living wage, let alone get rich. And mm. they allowed them to also legitimise what they were doing by talking about how it was both legal and consensual. Well, I'm sorry, just because something is legal doesn't make it ethical. And I'm also, quite frankly, sick and tired of this obsession with consent at the exclusion of all else. Yes, consent is indispensable when it comes to sex, but it is not the only consideration. And to pretend that it is, to pretend that anything goes from hookup culture to making pornos fresh out of high school without discussing the consequences is incredibly damaging to our culture and especially to our young people. Well, yeah, to have adult porn stars, which is essentially what a lot of these OnlyFans creators are, the ones who are actually making money, preying upon teenage boys who are at... Uh, in, on the Gold Coast for schoolies. I mean, if it was the other way around, if we had three men sitting there recruiting young girls for Girls Gone Wild type videos and, and finding content at schoolies, I mean, the, the cops would be called. People would be outraged. Look, I can guarantee you, Rita, that if it had been the other way around, if it had been older men targeting teenage girls and filming their sex acts for profit, spreading them across the internet and bragging about it online, the project would have done a story condemning this. But they didn't. And I think that's a really, really sad testament to their devaluation of boys. And not only that, but promoting prostitution and porn as a legitimate career prospect for women and girls is also, I think, a really sad message to be sending to them as well, particularly when porn is a key driver of male violence. Now, there's a store that I'm not familiar with, an online store that's popular with young girls. And, Rachel, you've posted about this particular store that's now selling sex toys. Uh, and you, you, this troubles you because their, their market is particularly young. Tell me about this. Yeah, so it's sort of in a similar vein to the OnlyFans story in the sense that it is a um, beauty chain making money off sexualization and sort of targeting this at young people. So basically Sephora has been promoting sex toys on its Instagram pages, specifically Sephora. vibrators. 
Sephora, yep. And not only does Sephora have a huge market share when it comes to teenage girls and tween girls, but it specifically promotes its products at them. So parents are understandably incredibly disturbed. Um, and not only is the marketing of sex toys on its Instagram pages where it knows young girls will be watching disturbing, but the fact that it actually links to pages which then go on to talk about explicit sexual acts, things like polyamory and gender identities, which are incredibly inappropriate for children and teenagers. Well, uh, kids are getting just so much sexualized content sent their way, whether it's uh, about pronouns, all the different genders, all the different uh, uh, sexual activities they could be engaging in. Um, and and uh, this is just another example. Rachel Wong, thank you so much for your time this evening.